always a healthy competition in terms of what we're doing, whether it's sport or, or school or whatever it, whatever it was. Um, so growing up, you could tell that it wasn't having an effect on him. To have his condition and play professional sport, that's phenomenal. I just thought at the time, if only they knew what he was overcoming to get here, I think you would understand it. When I opened up in the morning, Lewis would be there training. When I closed up at night, I had to boot him out. When I was born, my parents were told that I had a condition called Pollen Syndrome, and it meant that I wouldn't be able to play many sports. Early on, he described what it was to me, and I thought it was quite strange. Like, you're a young kid, you see it, you're like, oh. Mm. And mum and dad would sort of explain a little bit about it, and um, you could visibly see that we were slightly different physically. You could see his lung coming in and out, and just skin there, it's incredible. Um, and obviously, uh, and how he managed to bowl and play the way he did, uh, was uh, extraordinary at the time, to be honest with you. My condition means that I'm missing my right pectoral muscle and two ribs that are directly behind it, which has meant that other muscles have had to compensate for that. All the problems I didn't realise, the headaches and you know all those problems, he kept those to himself, he just got on with it. As a left-handed batsman, his um, chest is exposed. Obviously, a rock hard leather cricket ball coming down at you, and no rib cage or anything to protect you. Playing like organs is quite a scary prospect. I grew up in a, a village called Upper Beeding. It's at the foot of the downs. It's a really beautiful countryside. It's, I love it. I love where I live. I love where I grew up. My granddad introduced me to cricket in the garden. Um, my younger brother, Brad, we used to play sport together all the time, whether it be in the garden, around the park or anything. And that was just, every, we just did it all the time together. Um, my school didn't have cricket, so I joined a, a cricket club down the road. And that's when I really started enjoying cricket. And I first got a passion for wanting to actually play sport and, and compete. He wasn't particularly the most naturally gifted cricketer. But what he did have was um, this incredible drive to improve himself um, on his physicality and his skill. I knew I was behind everyone, um, physically, skill-wise, technique, everything. I was always behind people, so I knew I needed to work harder in order to get where I wanted to be. We have a little joke because I think I was, I was a little bit better than him. Um, and even to this day, I say I, I made him the cricketer he was today by putting him to all parts of the garden. Um, but obviously he had the, the dedication to the game and the commitment to, to, and the desire to want to become a professional. I wanted to become a professional cricketer and, and I was willing to do anything to, to get it. Because I was doing so much physically, um, I suddenly felt a searing pain in my back. And then eventually the surgeon came to me and said, yeah, you've got a, a stress fracture and you need to stop playing cricket and you need to consider that your condition could be affecting this. Um, that was a really tough thing for, as a 16 year old, to take. It, it affected him quite badly because he was obviously very down. Uh, he couldn't do the sport that he loved, the one he dedicated himself to and that he'd set out to become a professional at. I could have easily just turned around and, and not played and just walked away and found something else to do. I chose to use that negative scenario as a positive. I think that was when I really started to understand how much hard work it was going to take in order to, for me to do what I wanted to do, especially with my condition. It, it almost gave him a little bit more, um, more of a desire to overcome that initial injury and then, then, then make it. Uh, but he was still had this single-minded determination to want to be a professional cricketer. So I said, Lewis, if you, if you want to do this, you're going to have to do this yourself and be persistent. You know, when, when a lot of us were going to parties and a lot of us were going out on holidays, um, things like that, Lewis would, would sacrifice that. And after a few years of hard work, I managed to work my way up to the professional squad until we got to one game where a player got injured in the warm-up and I was told I needed to play. 
And that game was amazing. That was the first professional game I was ever going to play. Before we went home that night, getting just about to get in the car, and my coach grabbed me by the shoulder and said, Lewis, we're going to offer you a professional contract. You know, to, 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 be, to, to be able to put the work in for the rest of your body to be able to compensate what he had missing, that, that takes some time and effort and work and drive and determination. Just never stop, and I think that's a lesson that everyone can learn when they listen to Lewis or meet Lewis because uh, yeah, it's quite incredible. The more I think about it, the more I think uh, how extraordinary it was, how he did so well, to be honest with you. You just feel so proud of him, and especially as he'd gone through so many problems. I mean, from, a, from an eight-year-old playing on the junior ground at St James to then watching him play at the county ground at Hove, it's just been a fantastic journey. Finish then here for Lewis Hatchett. What a beautiful delivery that is. And starts well. It's the leg stump, I think it was. It was a length ball, I think. To get where he did and achieve what he had achieved, you know, hats off. People will not understand how hard it would have been for Lewis to have a professional career as a bowler with, with part of his ribcage missing. That is just. That's, that's mind blowing. To, to be knocked back, have people doubt you and doubt your talent, and then you just keep constantly coming back and finding ways to prove them wrong and keep doing that and keep doing that. Listening to Lewis, there's a lot to be learned, a lot to be said. I know it's, um, it's cliche, the underdog coming through, but it generally is that story with Lewis. It's just focusing on yourself and putting the work in. I look at my journey and realise that no matter what cards you're dealt, you can achieve whatever you want.